What's up, Doombots? Tony Scongili here with his Tower 3 review. I'm so sorry this took so long, but they changed some spells, they changed some characters, and now I really wanted to get a grip of what I was telling you to make sure I believe it is the best advice I can give, whether you agree with it or not. So, uh, Tower 3 is a 10-node tower that requires characters from both the Kingdom and Oceanic uh, affiliation tag, or origin tag, or whatever you want to call it for this. Now, the good news is, uh, if you've been following uh, salient advice from some of the content creators in this game, myself included, you will probably be working on a handful of the Kingdom characters to begin with, which is going to be great because they're going to carry you through some of the better parts of this challenge. The hard part becomes, of course, Oceanic. Now, the issue with that is that none of the Oceanic characters at the time of this video are amazing there are some good ones there are some ones that are better at different points in the game but specifically uh, all the oceanic characters kind of uh, come at this point and of course in tower five uh, that's where they they shine outside of that they're either used very situationally or just as random characters and it's really important to remember that you don't need to invest in everybody all the time always because it's the quickest way to not have any good characters so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick look at the kingdom and then the oceanic characters and give you my advice on who I think you should be working on. So real quick, let's take a look at the kingdom characters. And I said real quick because duh, this shouldn't be that hard. Now obviously Sean Yu is the best character in the game still to this day, so he's one of the primary target farms for you to succeed early, mid, and late game. Uh, therefore you probably have access to Sean Yu if you've been farming him every day from the store and if you haven't been i'm sorry uh, aladdin is also a very good early game character now he's recently just been reworked eh, aladdin actually wasn't reworked but the aladdin team was and therefore they he got a little bit more value as characters like genie jafar who is not farmable so don't worry about him and jasmine have become better all around so aladdin jasmine and Genie are great options to bring into this tower, but if you only had to pick two, which is pretty par for the course, considering that uh, you don't really need four Kingdom characters for the end of the game, you just need uh, three and then two Oceanic. So if you're using Kingdoms, uh, some of these Kingdom characters are very clearly worth investing in, and you can kind of tell based on the characters that I have ignored completely. Uh, not to say that they don't have some uses, just to say that they don't have the most impactful uh, early game, mid game, and even late game use for your roster. So, Sean Yu, Aladdin, Jasmine, uh, Mickey, and Robin Hood are among some of the best kingdom characters you're going to have access to, with Genie and Jafar being great options, Anna being absolutely phenomenal, but she's just become available, so it's very unlikely many players uh, started to farm her, unless of course you were really trying to get Elsa, at which point you probably put a little bit of gas into her, but she is a very good Kingdom character and she does help the team a lot. She's just not very good at damage. Uh, and of course, Milan is a phenomenal character, but she's currently inaccessible in the game, uh, which is why I only have a four star, because I think she's one of the best characters on the Kingdom team that uh, unless you were able to spend money or double down on effort and get really lucky, you probably don't have a good or any Milan at this point. So as far as Kingdom goes, one, two, three characters off the bat, and if you need to flex in Mickey or Robin Hood because you happen to have them and you wanted to invest in them, these are great options. Uh, I'm just advising you to work on Genie uh, a little bit less because his really only value is on the full team and to unlock Jafar, and Jafar is not so great that the effort is going to pay off immediately. But these are your options, and I think it's very clear which ones will help you across the game. So I think the Kingdom characters pretty much speak for themselves, but we do have to talk about the Oceanic, which is a significant problem and kind of the hang-up most players have. If you take a look at the Oceanic characters, there just aren't many, right? Off the bat, uh, you do start with two. You do have access to Ariel and Hook very early in the game. Uh, you can farm Jack Sparrow. Davy Jones is not particularly easy to come by, and Tinkerbell doesn't unlock early, even though she is farmable early. So we have to figure out what the best use of these characters are. And I think for my money, 
one of the best characters that you want to work on just in the oceanic tag from day one if you can is Ariel and the main reason why because I think she's a great character that's just a little undervalued when it comes to the early stages of the game mainly because her leadership ability of 8% maximum bonus health has been incredibly helpful to players who are trying to push forward especially in PvE content or in club dungeon having extra health is a great benefit it'll also help you in the tower because they'll be a little bit more survivable and if you haven't done too much of the tower you notice they hit a little bit harder than the average fight so if you happen to work on Ariel you'll probably be okay she is kind of the mainstay character as far as the oceanic characters you want to work on now from the other perspective we have we can't really count Davy Jones because he's not very accessible as a matter of fact by the time you unlock Davy Jones you probably already cleared this tower so let's look at the characters that are early game accessible as these two are currently not we can look at Jack uh, you can unlock Jack relatively early in the game with club coins he is an okay character he's a lot better when he's used as a counter key to meta teams or fights in PvP he doesn't really stand out completely on his own but he is totally adequate especially because of moves he has like parlay which will charm an opponent which effectively takes them out of combat for a turn uh, as well as cannonball barrage which is a pretty decent AoE damage that might crit more against characters with defense down you're gonna have a little bit defense down if using Shan Yu you know it's just kind of a really cool little combo they have but Jack is a relatively reasonable investment now you don't have to put too much into him as you can tell I have a four star Jack and I really haven't been spending the effort to star him up and mostly because I don't really need him for anything so I don't want to waste gold on somebody I'm not working on especially because I've been working on the frozen characters recently but Jack is a great option as the second oceanic character uh, if you plan on investing in anybody it would probably be him the other thing I'll tell you is how I was able to defeat tower 3 which was just using these two characters at their very low investment point Basically what I would do is I would lean very heavily on the strength of the kingdom characters You know the, one of the main teams I'm working on right now uh, I would use Ariel who is pretty invested in and she'd be a mainstay of the fight and then I would place either hook or Tinkerbell in the fight at very low investment because they didn't need to win or even survive they just needed to be present long enough for me to do the fight and sometimes I would go in and if the fight didn't go my way I would quit out and try again but uh, overall I just basically used the bottom of my roster to push me up through fight 8, 9, and 10. As long as I could get into fight 10 I knew it was just going to be a matter of time before I beat it maybe a little bit of RNG maybe I could just save it exactly where it was and invest in some of the strong characters but the point of tower 3 just so everyone understands is you want to lean heavily on the kingdom characters so that they're doing most of the work. This way you don't have to invest in your oceanic characters as much. Uh, you just kind of need to have them on the lot. So for my money, uh, assuming you only need access to two oceanic characters, uh, Ariel, since you have her from a very early stage in the game, and Jack, because he does have a little bit more usability than the other ones, and he's accessible very early in the game, are probably the two best that said if you do have the rest unlocked please feel free to throw them into a fight and use them almost as sacrificial offerings just to beat the fight with the strong kingdom characters or any investment you happen to put in either of these two characters now the only other thing I can say is that this video will eventually become outdated as more characters become available with the oceanic tag right now we don't have Maui uh, nor do we have anyone from Moana, uh, and we don't have Stitch or anyone from Stitch's uh, series, right? We have Zap, you know, the spell. So, as this game goes on, there may become more available options. I'm just kind of telling you not only how I was able to do Tower 3, but how I've been recommending other players for my stream to do Tower 3, and eventually, you know, either with RNG or just investment as it goes on in the kingdom characters 
most people are able to overcome this obstacle. Uh, tower 3 is probably the first difficult tower you're going to experience. Um, and when we move into tower 4, it's going to be very similar to this with one major change, but that's another video for another time. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much. Hopefully this helped you kind of paint what you should be doing early in preparation for Tower 3 or when you reach Tower 3, what the easiest way to accomplish it will be. Uh, comment below and let me know how you've done Tower 3 or if you're trying to use characters or if you've overgeared for it because you just happen to want to. Uh, let me know how you've experienced Tower 3. For me, I didn't really have much of an issue with it, but then again, I also was in the game in the beta. Uh, a lot of the players who I'm talking to now kind of had an issue until they realized that they don't need a strong full team to go in. They just need enough sacrifice characters or scapegoats to uh, progress as far as they need to. So let me know what you think. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching that video. Uh, real quick, a couple of these videos you're going to see at the end of my DSA content for the next week or two. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, James Runyon, has started a GoFundMe for uh, charity. And the charity is the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, 1 800 The Lost, or 1 800 843 5678. Please, um, as a result of Rapunzel, you know, not currently being in DSA, uh, and in a way to bring some positive uh, anything into the world right now, it is basically an attempt to raise about $1,800 for missing and exploited children, uh, $100 for every year Rapunzel was locked in her tower. I know it's a little kitschy, but I believe it's truly a good cause, so if you are capable and are interested uh, in the links below, there is the link to the description. It's also a pinned comment. Uh, feel free to donate if you are interested at all. Obviously, it would be great to get Rapunzel in DSA, but I think that any uh, charity, especially in these trying times, uh, would be helpful. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.